for a short hunt today. Uh, Nick and I are gonna go out to one of our co-workers uh, properties. And when you get there, when I start showing video, it's not gonna look like a whole lot. You're gonna see a double wide uh, sitting on a lot. But I noticed the last time that I was out there that there is a uh, stone wall. And I got on historic aerials, uh, great tool, especially if you're looking for structures you know, that may not have fallen down yet in the like 40s and 50s. And uh, basically saw that there was a couple places on his lot of property. Also, he tells me, which I don't think we can go to today, but there is an original chimney just standing in an open lot in the woods out there, and I don't think it's ever been hunted. So we're going to see about when we can get up there to hunt. And then before we get started today, I wanted to show some of the tools that I use. Historic Mapworks is one of my favorite websites. Um, the section that we're hunting today is the one in the center of the screen that shows WM Brindley. If you look at it right next to the name, you'll see three little squares that shows residences in 1883. For reference, this is an 87 acre plot of land. Over to the far right of that, you'll, there's a stream there and another road. You will see a, one more little square there on there, and that is the residence that we're hunting today, which goes all the way back down to that corner. The next one that I'm going to be showing you comes from Historic Aerials. Here's the Historic Aerials. Uh, I used a slide tool, and I pan back and forth between the 1950 and the 2016 aerial photographs. Uh, this is going to be very random, but the Y on the left hand side of the screen is the area that I'm hunting. As you remember on the last map from Historic Aerials, or uh, Historic Map Works, that's how it looked. Uh, basically it shows me the, the wooded layout between both, and then I can see the old farm where the house set in 1950, because it is a little different today. Uh, it's a great tool to use. Uh, most of the aerials, basically, the earliest ones I get are from the 1940s on most of the stuff. But it's, uh, it's a very good way to figure out where things were and in comparison, and you can slide back and forth. Also, another key on that is uh, mark the roads so that you know where the roads are at, so that it kind of gives you something to, to base your, what you're looking at off of, so you, uh, so you can kind of tell where you're at. Um, I wanted to show these just for a few minutes today, because these are two of the most used tools that I have while doing research to try to find uh, new and good uh, metal detecting spots. Now on with the video. Pulling up to Nick's garage. It's where a lot of the magic happens. Oh looky there. Sitting outside ready to rock and roll. So here we are at our destination for today. There's the, the modular I was telling you about. And over here, there's a cabin built up here. And there was a farmhouse that set back here in the eight, late 1800s, early 1900s. And we're gonna detect all the way back to that barn there this afternoon. See if we can come up with any good targets out of here. Yeah, there's a couple rock walls and, and stuff like that. So from the road, you can't see it, but from the maps and stuff like that, you can see where something was here. Say hi, Nick. Hello. First signal. Three inches deep. Caps out at an 89. Sounds like it's in the plug. Oh, it's a coin. I see it. Right there. What is this? Oh. Looks like it's a Roosevelt dime.
looks like it's clad. So the first time I came out this way, this is what I saw. I saw a little cabin type building here, but I saw this rock wall sitting here, which kind of prompted me to go home and do a little bit of research. And then I come to find out that the guy that lives here actually works with me. Eighty-five, eighty-six, eighty-four, eighty-seven, fairly deep. Let's see what we got. Another small target, three inches in, big chunk of lead. I think that's a coin sticking out of that plug. Oh, washer. So this one sounded pretty good. It was about an 84 to an 87, fairly deep hole. Hoping for a good old coin, need one. We've been searching around here for the honey hole. It's a good spot. Haven't really talked to Nick since he went off his way. Target's in the plug. Kind of a squashed cat. That was it. Got a repeatable eighty three. Two inches down. And that'll do it every time, especially if it's laying flat. I like the way it does that double tap. Well, since the metal detecting isn't going so well today, let's take a gander at this old barn. Check these beams out. Wow, a lot of trees, them logs. I'm amazed that we're not finding anything out here. I will figure out when this thing dates, but check that out. Can you imagine sitting here stacking all that rock up to build a foundation for a barn? Cutting down all them trees. We've gotten soft in our, these days. These people put in some work. Got a coin. <laughs> uh, 
It is a 25 cent coin from the old Belterra, from the Belterra Casino when they still had coin going in the slots. Wow. Okay, I think I got another coin. I think. It's right there. This looks like a token again. <laughs> it's another one of them. I'll take it.